So now for the part you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna show you guys, I just got a shower, excuse me. Show you guys the system. What I thunk up, wrote down, and what we built. It's been tested for a couple, maybe even three weeks. It's been working great. Great rest, everything's great. Not perfect, but great. But this is the frame, so I have all the storage here um, for battery packs, ratchet set kits, this torque wrench, clothes, all the general stuff that needs to go in the truck goes right here under this first half of the platform. I'm around to the other side of the truck. This is it. So this all sandwiches up here so that Max can have this entire area. And that's because, well, for those of you who don't know, Max is my 11 year old Black Lab Border Collie mix. In fact, Max actually doesn't have any golden in him. Is a Border Collie, which is black and white, and a Black Lab, which is black. He's the only gold one out of the litter. No complaints. No. He has all this space here, all this carpet to get full of hair, and then this. On the other side, this is the sleeping platform. So you already saw me put it up in that position. Now let's put it down. Still figuring out the pillows. There's dog treats again. This is the platform that folds down. I'll get the dimensions. I think it's 25 inches. And then this and the other platform together comes out to 57 inches. I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll verify that. So these things here, this is just pieces of bar. This here, the square, one inch square tubing slides over that and that's what links it up. And to make this piece lighter, there's no support here. Might add support one day because this bends down. It's not supported by this one inch square tubing. So I'll give you a shot up under here. So it's two legs and then two shorter legs in the back uh, because that little step up there and then just a simple frame. First things first. Line that up, shove it in there. I don't have a storage solution for the bars yet, but that's it. Shorter one towards the back, longer one towards the front. Could put this on a hinge system, but for the sake of time, Wanted to keep it simple, so that makes the platform. What I did is I left lots of room here. Um, nothing's an exact tight fit, because once you put the foam on it, all the dimensions become kind of mushy anyways. You're just laying in it, you won't notice. A little gap here, a little gap here, a gap between the door and the, uh, and the frame. So it's just a platform, and then the mattress makes up the rest of it. Take the foam. The foam was cut out to the width of a twin bed, so 39 inches. And I think I got maybe 53 or 57 in. Once again, I'll get you the dimensions, but just enough. I got a foam mattress out of a camper, cut it to size, cut it in two, and I just wish you guys could feel how soft this is. It is really nice. And we can confirm, super comfy. Those are the pillows, and that is it. So that makes the bed part up. It's There's gonna be a bit more of a project on this. Gonna make a curtain system so that we don't have to put these blinds up like you see back there. It doesn't even work very well. Um, gonna get proper blinds for it to keep the sun out and the heat out. But yeah, just a curtain for when you wanna jump in back, block out the light, get a quick couple hours of sleep. One of the main reasons I made this bed setup was for the ferry. So between Newfoundland and Labrador, there is a two and a half hour ferry that doesn't include the day's wait, basically. To do that ferry, you're there the whole day. So you're waiting for hours before, um, and you're waiting for hours on the ferry, and then you're finally set free. So this allows me to just jump in the back, relax, be comfortable, um, just opens up so many more possibilities where there isn't places to stay. Having a good night's sleep is invaluable. You guys couldn't tell by the video where I put DEF in my fuel tank. That happened. 
that was, and I guarantee you from a lack of sleep. So, problem solved. And a heart pillow for good measure. So here's the drill. So hang the keys for the truck. Um, you can set off the alarm, lock the doors, unlock the doors, remote start the truck if you're too warm or too cold, if the AC or heat isn't doing what it's supposed to. So for when I have a tailgate on, I can drop the tailgate here to let the fumes escape from the bed. And this is the generator remote. This is the remote that remote starts and stops the generator. So this is the Furman W, just read, read the numbers, 3650 IR. IR stands for remote. If you're looking to buy one of these, you're gonna be looking for this little pouch here on the side. This little thing here. That is where this remote that I just took from the truck conveniently slots into for storage. 3650 uh, starting watts. I ran a 20 amp welder off of it, no problem. It's not as quiet as a Honda, but it is pretty close. Has an hour gauge, shows you the hertz, the hours, and the volts. 30 amp RV plug there. Um, I know some people watch my videos because they like trucks, and they like trucks. You guys might like trucks for towing campers, so this is pretty relevant. Battery charger. You can charge a battery off of this. I looked at it, it was 17 volts. I wouldn't hook it up to anything, but that is there. Uh, one of the things I don't like about it, you gotta hold that after 12 hours of not running. It needs to uh, shut it off to preserve battery. Um, so if you haven't started in 12 hours, then you need to do that. So for example, if you shut it off in the morning um, and you go to start it that night, probably not gonna work. Big pain, especially if you're comfy in bed. So you hold that, that needs to be on, and then you hit this button. And yeah, that's it. So, so super happy with this. It's been pretty impressive, especially for the thousand dollar price point you can get it at Home Depot for. Some of you more keen viewers might have noticed this combobulation on the top here. Big, big, big complaint. Almost makes me wish I bought a Yamaha. Um, this has uh, unfortunately common uh, disease, a, uh, a syndrome maybe, that is called, on this channel, Tiny Tank Syndrome. The F-250 has it, the motorcycle has it, this has it. Just make, if you're gonna make something that runs off gas, whose sole purpose is to do something with gasoline, have it fit more gas in it. Okay, so on the cap here, which you can't see because of this crap, is 1.8 gallons. This is 1.8 gallons. That's not enough. It runs out of gas. I can, on a high load, barely get eight uh, hours of runtime out of it. That is really sad. And on a low load, like running an air conditioner, for example, you get 10 hours. So if you're just stopped, just, you know, having a gawk, having a smoke, whatever you do, um, and you want to do that for longer than 10 hours, well, you can't do that with this one. But anyways, the reason for the tape, see this red line here? Yeah, that's like no gas. 1.8 gallons, that is nothing. It's like six liters. What happened was if there's any gas in here, pretty much at all, the gas would go into this pipe and leak all over everything. And it would smell, everything would just smell like gas. So what I did, I drilled a hole through the cap and bent this pipe off so no gas could get into it. Yeah, unfortunately, that's my solution. Now, unlike like Hondas and Yamahas, a lot of those guys, they have kits that you can hook up pretty easy to a marine fuel tank and just run it off the marine fuel tank and then you get like weeks of runtime. You can't do that on this one because it has some weird carburetor system with some vacuum crap and it's a really complicated process. That's the generator for most cases this thing's perfect and if you don't mind the smaller runtime um well i found your soulmate so don't get me wrong i do love the generator and i do recommend it to a lot of people there's no excuse for a tiny tank no excuse to have a tiny small little incapable tank on anything
And yes, for any of those that are wondering, I have a carbon monoxide detector. Now I think when we were cleaning the truck, we brought it in the house, but I got a Kid D, Kide, K-I-D-D-E, I think, anyways. I got one of those carbon monoxide deten uh, detectors. Test it every night uh, before sleeping, and I have tested it to actually uh, put it in a room with the generator running. It does work, so I can sleep with peace of mind. I'm gonna buy two just in case you never know what could happen. Dog could eat one, which is gonna have a meter on it so I can see how much, if any, carbon monoxide is getting in, and just go from there. So for anyone wondering, I am 5'10", 5'11". Um, right now, I am pretty much touching the window and I can stretch out almost perfectly and my feet are touching the window. Um, it's pretty good and no one's, I, well, I don't know anyone that sleeps like a stick, so this is pretty good. Don't get used to used to the tailgate. It will be going. This is the AC system. Now I got a bit of dirt on it from when I was pressure washing, but all I did, I took this front plastic cover off. I packed this part where the air usually comes out with styrofoam. And so that blocked off the air, cut a hole in the top for this, uh, pipe piece of it's a piece of pipe if any of you have never used gorilla tape for the love of god go to the store get some it's the greatest invention the controls that i just showed you used to be in here i took them out extended all the wires and now it keeps the inside of the truck a certain temperature so you can set it to 18 it's too cold you can set it to 20. tape this up so that no water would get in once again kind of temporary just feeling things out so extended the wires, put all this in, dryer hose, stuck all that in, taped it, did a decent job so it doesn't look too bad, and that makes up the air conditioning setup. Now, you do need a sliding rear glass window to do this, unfortunately, um, but I'm going to be playing with the mini split soon, I think. I'm going to try and go that route, so there should be more options. It's turned around so that the intake is protected. This plugs into the generator. This pipe goes in here. And boom, that is redneck air conditioning. But it works. So that is the setup that you guys were asking about in the last video. It's just something I wanted for a long time, and since I wasn't doing anything these last five months, my mind was just going and going and going. Came up with this, went for it, picked up the air conditioner for 50, 60 bucks. I mean, there's maybe $150 worth of metal there. Uh, my girlfriend's grandfather had all that for free. Thank you very much. Welded everything for free. I owe him big. We'll see how I repay him in the future. But uh, yeah, the only thing that cost money was the generator. But I mean, a thousand bucks for a 3650 watt, three year warranty, remote start, all the goodies, the gadgets, um, just with a small tank. That's the only drawback. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be playing around with it. Gonna be making some more videos, some upgrades. Gotta put curtains up, gotta do the whole thing. It's gonna be fun. Having fun with it so far, being able to just camp everywhere. It's almost like an overlander now. I mean, it's the FX4 package on the truck, but yeah, maybe like a van life entry. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty happy in the truck. It's been it's it's been fun. Fun while you're young. Anyways, guys, paddle shifters. If you want one of those, the email is down below. I'm gonna be shipping those out next week, I think. Taking care of some old orders as well, and. Danger underscore industries is the Instagram. Hate posting pictures, but that's there. I will eventually. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Glad you guys are coming along for the journey. Please, for the love of God, subscribe. We are almost at 40,000. Not the kind to beg for subscriptions, but oh, we're so close to 40,000. Like, subscribe, get us to 40, unsubscribe. I don't even care. I gotta see that number turn over. Okay, guys, that is it for me. You guys. 
guys have a good day. It's actually kind of cold out today.